Can't see them, but we can hear them. Should okay, we, just just we, picture we, a very we, suave, debonair looking gentleman, uh, sort of Brad Pitt, but maybe a few years older. Um, okay, <laughs> well, let's do this. Uh, it looks like it's time to start. I am seeing so many legends of the hobby uh, on the screen. I, I am intimidated to even be uh, the MC of this meeting, to be honest. Uh, but anyways, let me do this. First, let's all say hello to Mike and Jeannie. Uh, if you've got your screen where you see a bunch of faces or anything like that, and Mike and Jeannie, if you say hello, uh, you'll show up prominently. Hello. Hi all. Hey Mike. Hey Mike. Hi guys. Congratulations, Michael. Hi Mike. Okay. Well, that concludes our ceremony. No, I'm teasing. Okay. I'll <laughs> <laughs> shake my hand. Mike, you hair. need a haircut. <laughs> all right. Um, perfect. Can everybody see my screen? Saber Baseball Cards Research Committee presents. Yes. 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 Okay. Fantastic. And Keith, welcome. I see you made it into the Zoom as well. Well done, mm -hmm. sir. Okay, well, let's not waste any time. We have such a full program. The only thing you guys are going to uh, regret is how long I accidentally talk. So slide number two, let's go. Okay, here's an overview of what we've got today. We've got the welcome and we've got the requisite technical glitches and I think we've, we've uh, accomplished both. So we're ahead of schedule. Um, Nick, my co-chair with the Baseball Cards Committee, is just going to talk a little bit about what the Burdick Award is and what it signifies since this is our very first year. Uh, we are, of course, honoring Mike Ehrenstein as our inaugural recipient. I think you all knew that coming in. And so we've got a number of things uh, going on with that. So Andrew Ehrenstein, possibly a future recipient himself uh, down the road, right? Uh, he'll be doing a career retrospective uh, of, of your life and career, Mike. So we're going to save you the trouble of a long speech. Uh, <laughs> we have anecdotes, tall tales, and or tributes. They can take their pick from distinguished surprise guests, some of whom have revealed their identity uh, through, through the magic of Zoom already. And then uh, I have a very short interview at the end uh, with Mike himself, the guest of honor. And then we have a trophy presentation. And then everybody in the audience uh, at the end, I'm trying to leave time. If anybody in the audience or everybody in the audience wants to say some kind words to Mike or talk about what his cards or photos or other things meant to them during their lifetime as collectors or what his friendship has meant to them over the years, uh, I want to allow some time uh, for people to share. So we'll see how that goes. I can't promise we'll be done on the dot on the hour, but, but that's kind of the schedule. So I'm going to stop sharing and then uh, Nick, you're going to be on next. So here we go. Uh, okay, uh, so Nick Vosbrink is the co-chair of Sabres Baseball Cards Research Committee. Yeah, there is such a thing. Uh, and so Nick, why don't you talk just a little bit about the award and what it signifies. Okay, uh, thanks Jason. Um, this award's a little bit different in the Sabre Award categories because this committee is actually a little bit different when it comes to Sabre committees. Um, my sound working okay, Jason? Yeah, your sound is working okay. okay. I may do some muting of folks who aren't. Speaking. Okay, anyway, so I think back to something Mark Armour wrote uh, a couple years ago when he was co chair of the committee and how while the most successful Sabre committees have produced some sort of collective work like a database or a book or an online project, uh, what this committee has built instead is a community. And so this award is actually from that community and recognizes individuals who have made baseball card collecting a better hobby for all of us. And um, sort of most importantly, it's our way of saying thank you to the winners as that community. Well said, well said. Okay, with that, we're quickly going to hand the baton now to Mike's son, Andrew, who many of you know as collectors. Uh, Andrew's prepared a little bit of a, a career retrospective, if that's fair to say. So Andrew, make sure you come off mute. Uh, and you should be able to share your screen as soon as I click this. I think you're good. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, Jason. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen right now. Uh, 
Okay, if anybody cannot see my screen, please speak up. Okay, I'm gonna to try to get through this in a timely manner, <laughs> but uh, I do have a lot to cover, so I'm gonna sort of zip through things. I'm gonna be showing a lot of uh, photos and articles that, and the articles obviously we're not gonna be able to read right now, but if anybody wants to see these after the fact, feel free to shoot me an email and I'll get them to you. Um, so I'd like to begin in the 60s. Uh, and that being said, I really think my father's story begins in 1951 when he was 11 years old. Uh, but we're going to jump right to 1968. In 1968, uh, my father was producing the sports cards for collector sets with his uh, Uncle Myron and Aunt Margie. And if you're lucky, you can find some of these on eBay. Uh, some of them have the stamping on the back here. Some of them don't. But this set was 82 cards. And it's probably the most popular SCFC set uh, that was produced. And really, uh, those cards were, were made to help support my father's collecting. And here are a couple shots of him in the 60s. Uh, on the left, he's, he's sorting 63 tops. On the right, he's got 1914, 1915 Cracker Jacks and Colgan's Chips. Uh, <laughs> I hope this isn't breaking any YouTube rules, but I'm going to play a short clip from, um, this is actually a VHS tape that came out, I think it was in 1988. And it was narrated by Mel Allen. And there's a short clip of my father in here that I'd like to show because in this clip, he's talking about a convention that he held in his uh, home in 1970 with 20 collectors. And that was one of the very first card shows. Um, so here you go. Now, one of the early pioneers of card shows was Mike Ehrenstein. I had one of the very first card shows. Yeah. It really wasn't a show. It was by invitation only. Uh, we had uh, about 15 or 20 collectors in my basement, uh, and it was about 1970. Uh, guys came from as far away, I think, as Maryland, which was a, an astronomical trek, I mean, like the other side of the world. Well, I think it's... Okay, so 1971, at the age of 31 years old, he attended another show, uh, known as a convention back then. I, I guess you could still call them conventions now, but uh, this was the Mid-Atlantic Sports Collectors Convention uh, at the home of Crawford Foxwell from Maryland. Uh, and at this show, uh, there were 14 guys. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, his 1970 show had 14 attendees. This show had 34. So. In one year, we went from my father's convention of 20 collectors to this convention with 34 collectors. Um, in 1972, my father needed one card to finish his T206 set. And that, of course, was a Honus Wagner card. And he discovered this card uh, locally here in Westchester. So by 1972, he had finished the uh, T206 set. Also in 1972, he was featured in an article promoting the uh, Midwest Sports Collectors Convention uh, that was in Detroit. And this article appeared in the Michigan Daily Tribune, uh, August 19th, 1972. And that's my father on the left and Bill Mastro on the right. And they were both uh, Wagner owners at the time. At that convention, this, uh, this is a photo of Bill Haber, uh, formerly of Tops. No. no. That's not Bill. Who is it's it? Ron Greenwood. Yeah. I always thought that was Bill Haber. No, Ron uh, Greenwood. Oh, Ron Greenwood. Yeah. Fred Mackay, my father, yeah. and Frank Nagy. Right. And... Uh, 
Some of you might be familiar. Hold on one second for me. You got a toothache there, Mike? <laughs> I was wondering what he's doing in that show. I was wondering what was going on there. <laughs> <clears throat> you still have a sport coat. <laughs> you look still... like you're in Goodfellas. <laughs> Ron, Ron Greenwood was a great guy, a terrific guy, good friend of mine. What was your connection with him? Card collecting. He was a college professor. His wife was a college professor. Uh, really great people. From Wisconsin, do I remember? What, what Fred didn't hear that? Was he in Wisconsin, do I remember? Yes, I, th yes. I think so, yeah. He was, yeah, he, he died young. I think he uh, got cancer in his 40s, maybe. Terrible. <clears throat> okay, so you have a scathing review of your wardrobe here. <laughs> I still have that jacket. I'm going to wear it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to jump to a few photos from some early shows with Tom Collier. Yep. And these were uh, the first reprint cards that TCMA produced. So this uh, was 1972 here. Excuse yep. me. I needed a haircut in that one too. That's true. <laughs> this is uh, my father and Rick Cerrone, who is also on this call today. Roosevelt Hotel. <laughs> you you were like 14 years old, Rick. Come on. Maybe 15. Mike, I think that outfit was the inspiration for Howard Wolowitz on Big Bang Theory. <laughs> <laughs> so, now jumping to 1973, we've got um, this article from Keith Oberman. And what this, ever happened to him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first um, ASCCA show, the American Sports Card Collectors Association. Um, and these shows were run out of New York City. Um, this show was May 25th to 27th, 1973. And there is the, the man right here. It's Ron Greenwood again. Yep. Yep. Okay. So also in 1973, um, my father discovered this card on Long Island, and this ended up being auctioned uh, at the uh, convention in Detroit that year and was um, won by Fred Mackay, who's on the call. Eleven hundred bucks. You ripped me off. <laughs> Well, I got a commission on that. Yeah, probably a thousand dollars. I think it was more like a hundred and ten. <laughs> also, in 1973, this um, article is promoting the September ASCCA show. So this was the second show from that year, uh, and this was the second ASCCA show overall. And the Wagner card on the right is the same card that uh, my father discovered in 1972. Yeah, it has photo corners holding it onto another card. Right. The, the three borders are missing. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to show that this is actually a reprint of the first issue of Sports Collector's Digest. And the feature article in that first issue is um, the second ASCCA show. So it's that same show from the article that I just showed. And here's that second page. So 1974 now, TCMA produced uh, their first minor league card set, and that was the 
Gastonia Rangers. And through TCA fashion, we've got the cards of the, both the president and the general manager of the team. That's probably, Fred Nichols is the guy who started it. He gave me the, uh, the photos. Right. It, it, he, yeah, he owned the team. And that's got, the whole thing got started from that. Right. Uh, here's another article from 74, also promoting uh, that September show. Yeah, that's all the stuff we were producing. Mm -hmm. Some collectibles in there. And they're my sisters. <laughs> <laughs> they're slightly older now. Yeah. Slightly, just slightly. <laughs> and this was obviously, well, 74 was four years before I was born, so. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And then in July of 74, um, my father discovered this card in Vermont. Yep. Two dealers from uh, New Jersey called me and said, if I would go up and investigate that card, they would, whatever I spent for that card, they would give me for my card. And we would just trade. And that's what we did. So I, I think I paid $1,500 for that one. And, you and then they up. took the one I had for 1500 so I was even. Right. And you held that one until 1984. 84, yep. So 74 was, um, 74, 75, 76, those were big years for you. I enjoyed them. <laughs> so during that time, uh, Baseball Nostalgia opened. <laughs> And this is in Cooperstown at Baseball Nostalgia. So the shot on the left was Pete. Uh, this question is for you, Pete Henrici. What year is the shot on the left? Is it 74? No, it would be uh, 75. Okay, so the shot on the left is 75 and the shot on the right is, I think that's 2017, 2016 or 2017. I'll be 17. Yeah I, yeah, I think so. So here's the, you guys must have just been getting the, the store open. And by the way, I should note that this is Pete Henrici on the left, my father in the middle, and Bill Himmelman on the right, and they are the partners in Baseball Nostalgia. <laughs> so this is, um, Double Day Field right here in the background. So anyone who's been here knows exactly where this shop is. If you've been to Double Day Field, this, this is right on the corner, right across from um, the third base side, the first base side bleachers. And strip cards. Yep. Wow. Unreal. And there you are. <laughs> oh, that's my mom. Yep. Andrew's grandmother. <clears throat> 1975, the uh, oh. SSPC set. Well. That's a long story. And of course, those cards are great for through the mail autographs, even today. So now we're gonna jump over to uh, 1978. Some of you may have seen this but this is worth showing again. It's only a minute and 22 seconds, but it's worth it. Really? In the spring, a young man's fancy turns to baseball cards, those cardboard rectangles that can be flipped, swapped, bought, and sold by children of all ages. There are now baseball card conventions. 
and one was held in New York this weekend involving the usual negotiating. Of all the millions of baseball cards in existence, ranging from the Ruths and Cobbs to the Van Lingo Mungos and the Frenchie Bordegares, the most valuable is one almost 70 years old, the great Pittsburgh star, Honus Wagner. There's only 25 in existence, and I have one of them. Can you describe it? Okay, it's a 1910 card of Honus Wagner that was issued with cigarettes. Uh, Wagner was against smoking, made them withdraw the card, and only 25 were left. And it's the most wanted co card, and it sold the last time for about $3,500. You're holding on to yours, sir. Yes, it's in the vault. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and by the way, I spaced out on his name earlier, but that quote that I showed you that was scathing your wardrobe was from Lionel Carter. Hmm. So for those who don't know, Lionel Carter is an old time hobby pioneer. So apparently he wrote um, uh, a giant article uh, about that show and kind of going around the show and, you know. Andrew, can you speak up? We can't hear you. Sure. Thank you. You know, Andrew, uh, you mentioned Van Lingel Mungo. Uh, I got a call from the Mets asking me to make cards of Van Lingel Mungo and send them to him. And I sent them to Mungo and he sued me. And I called the Mets and I said, like, what's going on? And they apologized to me for about five years. <laughs> it was hysterical. <laughs> well, uh, this one is from uh, our local paper, North County News, December 19th, 1978. So now I'm on the scene at this point. So <laughs> I'm two weeks old now. <laughs> Uh, 1981, TCMA becomes the official distributor uh, for 1981 Donruss. To the hobby. <laughs> yep. Uh, this shot is from the 1983 National. It's Tom, uh, collectors Tom Reed here, uh, Mike Gordon, my father, and Lou Lipset. We. It's another article from 1984 um, on TCMA minor league cards. And you see the TCMA Japanese set at the bottom here. This is at the TCMA warehouse. This is also 1984. Um, this is the uh, baseball card news editor, Ken Chicalo. I'm not sh sure how to say his last name. I think it's Chicalo or Sakalo. And this is the uh, program cover for the 1984 National. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is me right here. Yeah. <laughs> and this is my cousin, Dan, on the right. And we posed for this in uh, our backyard. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe you know when this was shot, but this has got to be 1990. Yeah. Then this is the photo file corporate booth. So this is this is post TCMA now. I think Wade Boggs had the next booth next to us. Do you remember where this was? Uh, I'm guessing Chicago, but could be could be could be anywhere. <laughs> All right, I mean. I could go on and on about each one of these photos. So I don't want to eat up too much time, but uh, Jason, I guess you can take it away from here. Okay, there we go. I was on mute, I apologize. Andrew, thank you for that. Just the 
photos and video clips that you found were phenomenal. And uh, I think, Mike, Mike, there was a little bit of a this is your life feel to, to some of that, I think, bringing back some memories there. And, totally. and I know so many of the names that Andrew mentioned are actually on the phone or on this call right now. So uh, the segment we're moving to now was uh, with Andrew's help, uh, we worked to find, Mike, people who kind of grew up in the hobby with you or were parts of your early uh, business ventures uh, who wanted to take the opportunity to be here and share some memories, stories, tall tales. We're not going to fact check anybody. And uh, so if I call your name, if I call your name, you'll need to come off mute. Uh, I'll give you a few seconds for that. And if, if it looks like uh, you, you maybe aren't finding the button, I'll, I'll try and take over if I can. But uh, I'll tell you what, Keith, if you're ready, would you want to kick it off and say some kind words? Well, I don't know if they're going to be kind, but uh -oh. uh, <laughs> hi, Mike. Congratulations on, on receiving the, uh, the Baseball Card Melvin Award. Uh, we, uh, it's been a long time coming, and I just did some math the other day. We've known each other for 48 and a half years. But wait, wait a minute, you're only 12 years old. Yeah, no, again, as I explained the last seven or eight decades that we've run into each other in various places, things change. But <laughs> one thing stays the same. Um, I have uh, the Wagner and the Wagner proof in my collection, and guess, I'm going to show this to camera one. Perhaps Ooh. this will refresh your memory. That Wait, is, yeah, that's it. I'm not seeing Keith. Wait a minute. Why are we not seeing you? How do we see Keith? Excellent it's question. It's because you're talking as soon as, as soon as Keith's talking and not yeah. you. Yeah. This is one of those rare times when I was not talking, Mike. That's why you couldn't, you couldn't <laughs> see me. But there's, there is your, uh, your, one of your Wagners that wound up in my collection. So this is indeed your life right there. Um, but one thing I wanted to say, you mentioned Ron Greenwood. Uh, and I'm just glad, I'm glad you did. I'm not surprised. It, what a lovely man he was. And he was great to those of us who were kids in the hobby and obviously to the adults. And the explanation for why he's in all those photographs and, and the uh, articles that Andrew showed about the 1973, the May 1973 show at the, the, the wonderful underground bunker known as the Union Center in downtown New York in, in Astor Place. Ron wrote an article. And unbeknownst to him, I also wrote an article about it. So uh, Sports Scoop printed them both side by side. And mine included a photograph of Ron that my father had taken. And Ron's included a photograph of me. And they're both terribly unflattering. So one of the great guys. And uh, as I recall, he, was, he taught at Wisconsin, but at least part of the year lived in Yonkers. So this is, this is why he was always in the New York part of the thing. Hmm. Uh, my... my time that here that I, I wanted to spend about Mike was about two things. One was the welcoming quality that he had to those of us who were getting started either in life or in, in baseball cards and sports memorabilia and indeed in sports media. I met Mike because he wrote an article about the famous and bar set in the Trader Speaks and I sort of offhandedly wrote him a note because the publisher used to include the addresses of all of the writers. And I said, I really enjoyed this, Mr. Aronstein, but it's really offensive that you would write an article like that when I'll never see one of those cards in my life. The response from Mike was not, yeah, shut up kid. The response was, hey, I see you live in Westchester, come up and see my collection. And, and not long after my father and I made the trek from Hastings to Yorktown Heights and there we were. And I got really into the the adult and sophisticated end of baseball cards and memorabilia because Mike, well, that was his answer. And I think that was his answer to everybody. I didn't know later until later that there was an ulterior motive to it, which was cheap child labor for all of his products. But we, you know, we all gained a certain benefit from that anyway. So what the heck? <laughs> uh, the, the connection then between Mike and me became would you want to write the backs of some of these baseball cards that I'm making starting in 1974 and through the SSPC cards, which really were the first time I was paid to, act, to write about active athletes. And it was, uh, it was quite a thing to have in my college applications. And so ultimately, given that he also later had me uh, go to Yankee Stadium and Shea Stadium to shoot photographs for a couple of SSPC sets that never happened, Mike got me my first credentials into Major League Baseball and the first time I ever went on a Major League Baseball field, all because of him and the publications that he started, Collectors Quarterly and Baseball Quarterly. 
And again, I don't want to blame him for my entire career, but if you're looking for somebody to point back to, like who got this idiot over the hump, meaning <laughs> me the idiot, uh, it's Mike Aronstein. And I, I always say this and it's, it's absolutely true. And one of the great, not only one of the great connectors and networkers as we call them today, but, but certainly one of the great people that, that I've met in the hobby and indeed in my life. And with that aside, I wanted to mention just a couple of things that, that we take for granted nowadays in the hobby slash business that to my knowledge, Mike invented, just so we have some idea of what the vision this man has had all these years and what this, what this industry turned into because of things that he decided to do. Legitimate reprints. Reprint was a dirty word until Mike Ehrenstein and Tom Collier made the TCMA uh, color repro repros of the early sets and made it a legitimate way of collecting cards. He's the first man to have made new cards of old players. That was a foreign concept. The minor league cards as a product of something the teams, the minor league teams themselves would want to do. That's all, Mike. He, that's the, the essence of TCMA in the, in the 70s and 80s. Uh, the New York City card shows were definitely all his. The card stores, as we saw, and thus the entire baseball memorabilia industry in Cooperstown, New York, that's all him. Plastic sheets for cards, although, Mike, you once told me that I inspired that because I used to wrap the stuff that was on sale on my table in saran wrap because it just looked exactly. that way. But you, get, you said, you know, we could put the cards in the plastic one at a time and then display them. And again, would that I had copyrighted that and stolen that right then. And of course, we then move on to the, the whole idea of media in, in sports memorabilia. The first magazine that didn't look like it was going to leave a really filthy, dirty stain on your hands in, uh, in sports memorabilia were Mike's publications. They were quality and we, we tried to make it look good and he, spent the, he, he paid the $2 to make them look good. Obviously, this is the man who defeated the Topps Monopoly uh, and created the entire concept and obviously the company Photophile. And I, I also, I never think of you, Mike, without thinking of one conversation we had. We saw his unfortunate image before, Bill Mastro. But you will recall that at some point in the 70s, I think it was at the November 1976 show, the big news in the hobby was that Mastro had spent $11,000 to buy a Wagner card. And the story that was going around was that his family had convened what would now be known as an intervention and discuss the possibility of putting him in a home. Apart from thinking about how that would have changed the lives and financial losses of others in the years to come, Mike's reaction to this was, and I never will forget this, was like, him, him in a home, those people who sat around and talked about him like he was nuts, they should be in a home. Hey, we all have problems with Bill, but $11,000, this is not the top end. Mike said, and I have it, I think, in an interview that we did in 1976 for my college radio station. Mike said, within our lifetimes, this card will be worth $100,000. And I expect that within, maybe within both of our lifetimes, but certainly within your lifetimes, it'll be worth a million dollars. And I went around and just bought out as many tables as I could at the card show once he said that. And of course, it's all correct. There's very few things that Mike said about this business and about the hobby that lies behind it that was not absolutely prescient and if anything somewhat conservative and it has been uh, a joy that I continue to participate in in large part because of the advancements that that uh, that Mike led the way on so when there comes to be an award about baseball cards and memorabilia and the hobby there is nobody more deserving than Mike Ehrenstein and I say that as a very grateful friend and uh, somebody who eventually did briefly own a famous and bar set so that would be what I wanted to say officially to you, my friend, and, and congratulations on this. And I just close by paraphrasing something your old partner, Tom Collier, probably would have said, don't let all of this goodwill go down the drain, so to speak. Congratulations, Mike. Thank you. I, I, you're very articulate for a 12-year-old. <laughs> I've been called a 12-year-old repeatedly since I was 12 years old, Mike, as you know. <laughs> Oh my God, I, I might need somebody to pinch hit for me as MC. I think, Keith, you, you, you're gonna make me cry with the sentimental, heartfelt tribute. Um, well, I don't know who could follow Keith 
Um, but I will say, if anybody's got a shot, it would be a writer in Baseball's Hall of Fame. So, uh, Bill Madden, if I still have you on audio, you've been patient with the Zoom glitches, but if you're there, the floor is yours. Well, thank you, Jason. I, I, can you hear me okay? Yeah, Mike, can you hear Bill as well? Uh, yes. Okay, you're, you're good. Oh, good. Oh, good. So I can rip him now? Yeah. yeah. Totally. <laughs> Well, I have to I have to say, Mike Aronstein was my Jefferson Burdick. I was a baseball card collector from the time I was 11 years old, or maybe even earlier. But I, I knew nothing about the history of baseball cards, particularly the tobacco cards and the caramel cards, and all the stuff from the you know the early 1900s. And only when I came to know Mike, uh, I became educated on all of that stuff. Unfortunately, I didn't have the wherewithal to buy any of that stuff. Mike got it, but I didn't. So I never had a Wagner card. But um, he was my educator. And then when we became good friends, uh, I admired him as the Don Quixote of our industry as far as he was always uh, jousting at the windows of Tops Incorporated. <laughs> and uh, we did many projects together, many fun projects together. Uh, a lot of them uh, uh, involving the Daily News. Uh, because uh, I got permission from the people at the Daily News to use uh, a lot of their color photos from the old road, uh, uh, the color Sunday uh, sections from the 40s and 50s. And uh, they gave me permission to use them for my, some of Mike's card sets. So. Mike and I spent many an hour down the bowels of the Daily News building on 42nd Street uh, going through these priceless, beautiful f color photos. And it was, it was a, a great adventure and it was great fun. And then we got into the yearbook business. I, I, I came up with this idea. I said, why don't we, I love, I love the baseball yearbooks. And I said, why don't we get, you got all these photos and everything. Why don't we get into the yearbook business, only not doing the current day yearbooks, but doing retrospective yearbooks that never got printed. And we started out by convincing uh, the Yankees to let us do, this is in 1977, to let us do a 1927 Yankee yearbook uh, for the 50th anniversary. And uh, Mike had all these great photos. And I wrote all the bios and all the uh, everything else about it. And we sold it to the Yankees and they used it as their insert in the yearbook that year. And then we sold them separately. And uh, unfortunately, with everything I did with Mike, we, only had, we always had these great ideas, but they never went the distance. <laughs> we tried to talk the Phillies into doing something with them. With their, I, I forget what year. We wanted to do the Gas House Gang with the Cardinals. But somehow it never came to fruition. But maybe Mike, we could start. We could do it now. I don't know. I'm ready. But, um, <laughs> but no, Mike we, has we, been my, he's been my mentor, my friend, and uh, this is, award is so is so deserving. If there's anybody that deserves an award as the king of the baseball card industry, it is Mike Aronstein. Thank you. Thank you. We did do an insert for the Phillies, though. Oh, we did? Yes. The one that spelled Philadelphia wrong on the cover. Yes. <laughs> it said Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Which we didn't, which we didn't discover until he had sold them all. Oh, okay. Well, I remember taking that trip down to Philadelphia on the train with you. And, yeah. uh, and um, we went to visit somebody down there. I, I didn't remember that, that they actually accepted our idea. But I'm glad yeah. to hear that. Yep. I think those were the only two that we did, the Phillies and the Yankees. Yeah, that, we had grand ideas. We were going to do the Gas House Gang, like I said. We, we were going to do the, the Philadelphia A's, except that they didn't exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we had a great idea to just do, do them on their own. And uh, unfortunately, we could never find somebody that was interested in printing them and, and basically marketing them for us. Yep. You have to find people who are as crazy as we are. There, there, might, right. be, there might be some on this call. There might be. <laughs> well, good. 
I'm game, Mike, if you are. No, I'm ready. I'm, I'm I got, ready to I got, go. I'm down here in Florida in the height of a pandemic down here. I got nothing to do right now. <laughs> but we're, we're pretty good in New Mexico with the pandemic. People are really being cautious. It's excellent. And there's another New Mexican giving the uh, thumbs up. <laughs> Viva victory sign. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think the pandemic knows where New Mexico is, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me let me do this because we've still got uh, a few things uh, left to do today. Uh, Rick, if you wouldn't mind, so Rick Sarone is on. Rick, if you want to share a story or some, some nice words for Mike, we'll take that. Well, thank you so much. It's wonderful to be with everyone and see so many familiar faces. Brian Riley's there and the beautiful Aaron yeah. Steve Mills, Melina and Sarah, uh, Jean. Um, you know, I want to talk about Mike. I can't do it without talking about me because I'm not here. I mean, I owe, I owe everything to him. Uh, and maybe my high school guidance counselor who got me through, uh, through high school. Um, when I met Mike, I had the singular idea of someday being the public relations director of the New York Yankees. And the way to do that was to go to school for journalism. So I, I went to Northern Illinois University and I did everything I could possibly do to learn my trade, was the sports editor of the, news, the student newspaper in the summer, during summer sessions where there went no sports, so you had to come up with things to write about. Well, somehow I got a flyer in the mail. I don't remember when, but I remember it was called the Baseball Advertiser, and it advertised eight by 10 glossy photos of Yankee greats um, for 50 cents. and. I noticed that the phone number was local. It was a local 914-245, same as me, phone number. It was Mike's home number. So I called it and I said, I wanna buy some of these photos. He had me over. Um, we went down to his basement where you couldn't stand up straight. So here's two people like hunched over because of the low ceiling and I bought some photos. The next thing I know, I did a story on him for my student newspaper. Uh, because I needed things to write about in the summer. Here's a man making baseball cards in his basement. The next thing I know, my senior year, I get this magazine in my mailbox at my dorm called Collector's Quarterly, which I thought was terrific, and I got the next one, the next one. So now I come home to New York in the summer after graduation. It's August of 1976. Um, I want to be the PR director of the New York Yankees, but they're not hiring a PR director at that particular time, and I'm only 21 years old. And uh, I, Mike calls me, and he says, I got a job for you. He calls me over to his house, and he says, I got this magazine, Collector's Quarterly. I got one issue left to fulfill everybody's one-year subscription. I lost my editor. He's going off to college. Keith Olbermann on his way to Cornell. Put this thing together. He just, I'll give you $150. Well, I would have done it for nothing. I didn't tell that to Mike, but so I put what was destined to be the last issue of Collectors Quarterly together you know, with glue and wax and type and and I loved it. And I went and said to Mike, who, who was hell bent on getting rid of this magazine, why don't we keep this going? Because I, I think this could be a pretty good job for me. And I said, but let's not keep it going as Collectors Quarterly. Let's make it Baseball Quarterly because the only baseball magazine that comes out more than once a year is Baseball Digest. And quite frankly, that's not very good. Uh, full disclosure, I'm now the editor-in-chief of that publication, but this was 1975. And it was a little, you know, pulp magazine. So Mike went along with it and we started publishing Baseball Quarterly. Slick paper, um, we added color photos and somebody one day said, how come this isn't on the newsstand? Mike and I looked at each other and said, that's a great idea. How would we do that? Mm -hmm. And the gentleman gave us his opinion. And Mike said, I've got a cousin in the news, in the magazine business. So we went and met with Mike's cousin, Sillig. And he told us with his cigar and his apron, he said, you got to get a national distributor. So we got a national distributor. They said, I give us 10,000 copies. <laughs> Mike almost had a heart attack because he's paying $1.50 a copy for 1,000 copies. Now someone wants them to print 10,000, geez, that's $15,000.
until we learned that on a big press and printing a big number of copies, it was only 28 cents a copy. Yeah. So by the next year, they wanted 100,000 copies. So Mike is now the publisher. I'm the editor of a national baseball magazine. Um, it was truly amazing what, uh, and I'm listening to the, the previous speakers, Bill and Andrew and Keith. You know, I feel like it was, we were around Thomas Edison, you, you know, before inventing the light bulb. None of this existed. None of these things existed. The only bad advice Mike ever gave me was, Rick, take the, buy all these SSPC set and just put them away. And I did that and they're still down there, Mike. So, but uh, I really owe everything I've done to Mike because, I mean, he launched my career as I, as Keith said, he did his. And um, I did go there with the idea of being the, the PR director of the Yankees and I gained valuable life experience, value experience in the hobby, in writing. And um, I'm just going to show you this right here. Okay. Mike, thanks for the ring. I have, <laughs> six, I have six of them. I'm only wearing one, but I don't have any of this without you. Uh, you're a true visionary. Uh, to, just to think back and, uh, you know, being in your driveway, sorting 1974 Cedar Rapids or Des Moines cards, while your daughters kept me company, Sarah on her little tricycle. Uh, I think I was there, I, mean, I was there pretty early because I remember Jean having an episode in the, in the offices and the next day she reported that I'm pregnant. So I was there pretty early in the Andrew Aronstein era. So <laughs> it's been a wonderful honor to be friends with both Mike and Jean and um, I couldn't be happier for you winning this prestigious award. Uh, I won't say it's long overdue, but because it, it just seems like yesterday we were doing this in your basement and then on Ringgold Street in, in, uh, in Peekskill and uh, it's been quite a ride. Thank you, oh, Mike, yeah. congratulations. If people did bang their head on the uh, beams in the ceiling. It was just, you know, like five foot three, five in foot four, you know, in the basement. That was early though. That was, that was where it started, in your basement, and your garage, and your driveway. <laughs> oh. Okay. Rick, thank you so much for that. And then Fred Mackay is on. Fred, if you're uh, on mute, go ahead and unmute, and anything you'd like to share as well. And I think you're off mute. We're ready for you. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, my time with Michael goes back, I guess, the first time I think I met Mike was in... Um, one of those New York shows with uh, Paul Gallagher, do I recall? Bob. Bob Gallagher. Yeah. Oh, there were two Gallagher brothers. Yeah, yeah. They were the first one in the door, and he told me that I was the first one in one day, and I he had to make the sale. He said, if he doesn't make the first sale, it's a bad show. So I really got, got him down in price just to make the first sale on the day. But that's the first time I think I met you. And of course, Keith was there, I think, at one point. And uh, Rob Lisson came in with his dad with uncut sheets of Gaudis, I recall. And uh, Neil Sackow. What a, what a, anyway, what a guy he was. And um, I was traveling with Bill Master at the time. I worked for Bill's dad for nine years. And um, Bill and I did all the early shows together and everything. And uh, then we were at the show in Detroit, like I think Andrew mentioned before. And you turned up the Wagner card. And as I recall the story, the guy wouldn't let you buy it, but you told him the show was going on. And in those days, they had, at the show, they had an auction at the end of the night. And I heard that the um, Wagner card was coming up. I never, I didn't have a T206 to my name, but because Bill Mastro and I were buddies, collector uh, adversaries, um, Anyway, it was a competition, so I heard it was coming up. So I said, well, I'm, I might get a shot at it. So I sold my table for $500. I just got my income tax return for $600. And you <laughs> caught up and offered the thing, and I won the Wagner for $1,100. And Bill and I got right in the car, drove right out to your place in Long Island to pick it up. And that was the second time I was at your house because I had been there at your early, I think it was like February 70. I remember it snowed when you had all the guys in the basement. And right. I've, given, I've given Andrew 
one of the TCMA uncut sheets that we all signed on the back and right. we distributed to everybody. I give him a copy of that to Andrew to use. And that was my first big time with obviously advanced collectors. I was 20 at the time. And you mentioned guys came as far away as Maryland. I thought I remember Dennis Gray being there, and he was from Detroit. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Right? Okay, I thought yeah. he was there, too. And from there, um, just got into the hobby and got, got going. I didn't, unfortunately, get into a lot of the TCMA stuff. For whatever reason, that wasn't my cup of tea. Uh, but I know you did a great job with them over the years, and... And hearing just stories now that I didn't know. Uh, so you're the one to blame for Keith Olbermann, I guess. So uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Keith, I have letters. Well, we wrote letters back and forth when he was 12 and I was probably 14 uh, back in the day. And uh, it was just a great ride for everything. But you've done so much for the hobby that um, it just goes without saying that you have to be the number one for this award. So I'm glad that you're getting it and not some schlub somewhere. But you really <laughs> deserve it, and thanks for all that you've done for the hobby. Thanks a million. Okay, Mike. The Schlub Somewhere, that's a perfect segue to our 2021 award, uh, which will be announced <laughs> in <soon. laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, if I, uh, I, I saw Pete Henrici has joined us, and uh, even my mouse pad is a bit of TCMA history. Well, it didn't show too great on the Zoom that I bought at Pete's store last year. But Pete, would you want to share any any uh, fun stories about Mike before we move on? Well, you know, in terms of fun, his sense of humor is way out there. And he's quick <laughs> and he's responsive. And the first year we were in the store, we had a gentleman come up with a pile of TCMA stuff and it came to whatever the number was and he offered Mike about a third of that. And Mike just pulled out his wallet and said, here, just take it. So, I mean, this, you know, whether it's a dry sense of humor or bizarre, that's, that's what you got. But he's done a tremendous amount for the hobby. He's done a tremendous amount for the uh, history of baseball, which segues into Sabre fantastically, and promoting all the players, not just the stars. And, and to me, that's, that's the biggest asset of what's going on. So congratulations, Mike, on an award well-deserved. Thank you. Did you get my uh, what are, uh, Marvin Miller induction day cards? Uh, your email said tomorrow, so I'm going to hold you uh, to it. I, I made 15 Marvin Miller induction day cards, even though he won't get in until next year. He got in back in December, by the way. Oh, yeah, he's in, but not inducted. <laughs> small, small potatoes, really. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. Uh, Andrew, if you wanted to come back on, uh, somebody who couldn't join us today is Rob Lifson. That's a name many of you know. Uh, but Andrew had some words, I think, from Rob uh, to read. Yeah. So Rob had actually sent me a package uh, last summer because uh, I was in Chicago with you for the um, Black Sox Symposium. And when I returned home, there was a package at my door and I had no idea what it could be. And it was from Rob Lifson and he had sent me a whole bunch of great, really great um, early material uh, related to my father, some hobby publications and uh, an early business card. And he included a very nice letter uh, with some very nice things to say about my father. So I'm gonna read uh, two portions of this letter. Uh, so let me find my place here real quick. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay. As you know, your dad was one of the big guns in the hobby. He was very inspirational to me. The respect he garnered, the way he could talk to anyone, the way he could communicate and get to the key points of business dealings and be so incredibly knowledgeable. He was involved in so many deals and projects. I don't know where he found the time or energy. He could accomplish anything. And if he was involved, the project, whatever it was, always had instant credibility. Uh, and then that's the first portion, the second portion. Mike Arnstein was such a huge figure to me. He had a very big impact on me by showing by example what was possible to do in the hobby. He was easy to admire, a great role model for an impressionable youngster that in retrospect definitely played a role in my confidence that anything I could envision creating or building in the hobby 
or business world I can make a reality with hard work, always operating in a way that earned respect of others and being someone that people could always count on. And there you go. Andrew, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, well, we are, we are getting near the end. I had drafted several interview questions, Mike, but you dodge a little bit of a bullet. There's a save by the bell. I'm only gonna ask two of them uh, because I do wanna make room for, for some uh, audience interaction as well for those of you who are able to stay a little past the top of the hour. So Mike, I'll just ask the first question here. Um, what does it mean to you to be recognized in this way as our first award winner and obviously surrounded by so many people uh, who've worked with you and loved you over the years? It, it's wonderful, it really is. And to do something that you love your entire life and then be honored for it is amazing. I mean, uh, 50 years, uh, that's really all I did was uh, cards and photos. And it's and I'm still doing it today. Uh, you know, I'm still working on stuff today. But it, it's just, it's wonderful. I, I didn't know I was so good. I would have paid more attention to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Not too late. Not too late. Okay. <laughs> And then, and then my, my second question is, are you ready for the trophy presentation? Yes, I'm ready. I'm sitting I don't down. Know if, I don't know if you are because you're not wearing sunglasses. This could be a little bit blinding. It's huge, it's huge. Yeah, okay, all right. Well, gee, it, I was able to smuggle the trophy through your kind neighbors and then your wife, Jeannie. And, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have it here. There it is. And I'm gonna have Mike. Uncover it. Uncover it. If it falls apart, it's well. It is my fault. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. We'll stand it up. It's okay. it's totally gorgeous. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Completely gorgeous. We'll stand it up so yeah. you can really see okay. it. No. Fragile. No. But it's, it's no, but they, they can't wait, see it's it. It's very fragile. So oh, where's? Yeah. And I've got a photo of it. I can I can pull up as yes, well. Yes, uh, but yeah, we we can give this a go. Okay, let's go. do this. Please. Okay, now you can show. Yes. There you go. Wow. There it is. Unbelievable. The, uh, Mike. As you know, the photo was shot by Sports Illustrated for an article about the Tops lawsuit, and Tops killed the article. And uh, four or five years later, Sports Illustrated wanted some information from me. And I say, I'll be happy to give it to you if you give me the photos. And they gave me the photos, so I told them what they wanted to know about some other subject, which I don't remember. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, well, let's see. Uh, let's see, I, okay, just a sec, Jason, you can do this. Uh, okay, can people see my screen? Yep. Yep. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, here, here we go. For those of you who didn't get a, a great look at the, uh, oh, of all the times for me to, to get bad at uh, doing this or stay bad, we might say, <laughs> let, me, let me try it one last time. Uh, and if not, uh, we will, uh, let's see, here we go. Okay, uh, three, two, one, there we go. So if you, if you didn't get a good look at the- Oh, uh, there, yeah, perfect. <laughs> so, yeah, and so my co-chair, Nick, designed the card. Some of you will recognize the design because, of course, the original uh, card came from Mike himself. Uh, and I sort of glittered it up just to sort of match the, the shininess of the trophy. So uh, congratulations there. Um, and with that, I'm going to stop sharing. So we have just the opportunity for uh, folks in the audience, for anybody who's willing to stay a couple minutes late, uh, if anybody just wants to congratulate Mike, come off mute, maybe share what his cards have meant to you or, or just the friendship has meant to you. We'll take it all. Uh, I'll Mike, go. Go? Oh. Hello, am I on? Yes. I think so. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Sir. Okay, so I think I know Mike the longest of anybody on this call since I am his first cousin. So Mike, <laughs> and this is way past my bedtime, Mike, I will tell you. 
<laughs> so Maryland's here. Uh, Maryland's here. Ten o'clock on the East Coast. You're from, I I can't see you. I can hear you. Oh, I don't know. I, who know? Uh, do you think I know what I'm doing with Zoom? At least you can hear me. Torture. So anyway, so uh, like I said, I probably know Mike the longest since we're first cousins. Um, and my recollection is really so much about my dad, who really started both of us in terms of our appreciation oh, for sports and collecting. Interrupting uh, you? What's that? Can you hear me still? Okay. So, yeah. so anyway, um, in fact, I want to know what the value now is of that 1968 card collection that uh, that was shown first by Andrew, since my dad since my dad drew every picture in that collection. No, your dad and your mother. Yep, absolutely. Yep. So uh, anyway, so congratulations, cuz. Good to see you. Hi, Jeannie. Hi, we can't see you. I know, I don't know what I'm doing. You think I know? <laughs> <laughs> what, am I, what am I supposed to hit here? I don't uh, know. We can see him. We can see him on our screen. I can see his him. iPad. Gotcha. Oh, Who are you? you can see, some of you can see me? Yeah, we can, yeah, yeah. We can see you. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, Mike, it's just you and Jeannie. Mikey looks good. <laughs> but where he is he He looks awake. He's awake. This is my coronavirus hair. You, you need a haircut, cuz. No, until <laughs> the virus ends, then I'll... <laughs> anyway, thanks so much. Hey, thank, thank you. you. See you soon. Yes, yeah, one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, can I say something? I was just going to call your name, Jeff. Yes. Okay. So um, I only know Mike for a few years, but um, when I hear some of the early stories, the first card show I ever went to was the September 73 show. And um, it was right after my birthday, so I had some birthday money. And one of the things I remember about that show and all the shows in the 70s was it was such a kind of sweet collector-driven event as opposed to a cash event. And I, I knew baseball history. I didn't know a ton of card history. Um, but I always felt well guided and well served by the people who were selling. They never really tried to rip me off. Uh, and then when I started getting back into cards in the mid eighties, that had changed a lot. Um, but a lot of other things that were important to me, uh, even before we moved to Cooperstown, I would always go to the baseball nostalgia store. I was just looking at something I bought there in 86. I communicated with Andrew about it. And then when I moved here in 2003 and started going often and got to know Pete, all of a sudden, you know, he's like, yeah, you know, I have an article I wrote in that Collector's Quarterly, which I've had since whatever, 1975 or six. Uh, and then to finally meet Mike, see him at least once or twice a year, uh, one of the, if not the greatest summer saber speakers we ever had. He, you know, you can imagine what a raconteur he was. Uh, so it's just been a joy to kind of get to know him a little bit, get to know Andrew, and uh, I'm thrilled that he got this award. Thank you. Well said, Jeff. Okay, anybody else in the audience? Ryan. Yes, I would, I would love to. Hello, Mike. It's great to see you. Jeannie, it's wonderful to see you both. Wh where Brian, are you? Brian, we I'm here. You, I'm in Costa Rica, but I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> okay. okay. Listen, uh, it's impossible for me to talk about Mike like uh, Rick Cerrone and Keith Oberman without talking a little bit about myself because uh, I'm 55 and for 40 years, uh, Mike has been one of the seminal uh, people in my life. Uh, my entire career has been because of Mike. Mike gave me my first job at 15 uh, in high school. And uh, then we took a little break. And after college, Mike gave me another job uh, that allowed me to say, in all honesty, that I got up every day for 32 years and went to a job that I loved. Mike, you've, you've been my mentor, a teacher, uh, you've been like a father to me for, for a very, very long time. And uh, I am just so proud of you. And you're so deserving of this award. And uh, I just want to tell you that everyone on this, everybody a part of this here, we all love you. And uh, we are all so grateful 
for everything that you've done to impact all of our lives. And uh, congratulations. Thank you. Couldn't have been better. <laughs> it was a great run. <laughs> okay, anybody else? There are people. I'll say something. Can I, I'll say something. Um, my name is Mitch Vogel, and I've uh, never gone to a baseball show. Um, <laughs> as an adult, I've never had a baseball card. Um, Zoom bomber. He's a Zoom bomber. <laughs> <laughs> but what I do have is a, is a warm place in my heart for Mike and Jeannie and his whole family. Um, Mike, you're the tops. Uh, not the card, but you're the tops. Uh, and uh, one P, it, one P. <laughs> with one P. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's uh, it, it, being here tonight gave me a whole new uh, impression of you. Um, and uh, so many people are mentored by you as kids. Um, I've been mentored to you as an adult because you give me a lot of advice about the world and everything else. So I'm very glad I was invited and I'm wish you nothing but the best and i'll see you in santa fe sometime or another i, I hopefully hope get there and we'll get a haircut together i i'm not going to get a haircut until this is all over and mike just said the same thing so i hope we don't have long beards like zz top and i hope you don't have long hair like uh like santa claus with the <laughs> tail and everything so anyway be good and and uh, best of luck thank you see you thank soon you. <laughs> okay Bye. This is Sarah, daughter number two, as I'm called. <laughs> I just wanted to say congratulations, Dad. I spent much of my childhood sorting baseball cards many times with Rick and many others and working at the store in Cooperstown over the summers with Pete and everyone else. And it was a wonderful childhood. And I just want to say congratulations. Thank you. I hope to see you soon, too. Maybe. Yes, it's been way too long from and my grandchildren. Maybe. Congratulations. 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 Come on, baby. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, anybody, anybody else? Okay, quickly, daughter number one. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, much of my life, too, revolved around going to baseball card shows. And um, also having a part in um, my dad being an entrepreneur, which is an amazing thing to witness. And, be, uh, and I'm very respectful of what he did, you know, throughout his life and taking those chances. And also Mitch, you've been involved in baseball because you've gone to Fuego games. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> I don't know if everybody knows the Fuegos in New Mexico is a minor league team that my dad is still very involved in baseball and he goes to every single one of their games, takes pictures of every player and every player from every team that visits and makes a, a baseball card for every single player on the Fuegos every year, and every team that comes and plays the Fuegos, he makes a baseball card for them. Awesome. It's a postcard. A and postcard. I give a postcard. I give every player three postcards of themselves, and I tell them, send this to your mother, and she will find it refrigerator worthy. <laughs> when you go home, it'll be on the refrigerator. Mike got an award from the Fuego as their number one fan. Uh, <laughs> In fact, he's the only fan. <laughs> so, so wait, Mike, Mike, does this mean you're starting all of this all over again? This is uh, <laughs> 74 again. Well, right now we're working on a card set of the 1948 Western League. We, we just bought uh, 175 negatives. I saw those. I almost, out, I almost outbid you for them. You should, you should have told me. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to make a card set. You need somebody to write the backs? Totally. Yeah, absolutely. All right. <laughs> I have a typewriter. I'll, I'll use the typewriter this time. The SSPC backs, you'll remember this, Mike. Half of them were handwritten. 
by me in, at Cornell when I was 16. You remember that? You had the decipher yep. in my handwriting. Yep. All right, I'll type these. Wait, didn't you take a lot of the photos? No, no. That was all our friend who shall not be named for legal reasons. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you took some of them. No, I oh. took the ones for the set that we didn't make in 76. I took all of those. And we attempted to stay out of jail, I think. That's what it was. Well, yes, yes. You did. <laughs> my, name was, my name was nowhere in any of the paperwork. They didn't know about me. And don't, don't mention it now. I'm still a consultant for tops. Don't tell them about this or they will throw me out. <laughs> you know, Mike, this is Rick. I want to throw one other thing in there. Just like Keith, we got our first credentials to games um, from, from TCMA. or um, Mine was uh, to take pictures. You, you paid me $25 and gave me all these rolls of film to just go to the Yankee game and take every player you can get. Right. And two, fun, two funny things was, one of the players I took was uh, Thurman Munson, um, who gave me a hard time to joke around, and then he posed. And that photo is the photo that you see everywhere of Thurman Munson. Um, I saw it just yesterday, somebody used it to depict something. Ooh, but the other story is that, um, that same weekend, I took a picture of Munson and Chambliss, like Mantle and Mara, side by side with their bats. And then years and years, and I gave you the negatives. I never saw it. Years later, I told this story in like 2002, 2003, to Chris Chambliss, who was our batting coach, about this photo. And he goes, oh, you got to get me that photo. I am like, get you the photo. I, I handed Mike the negative, the rolls of film. I don't. I, I felt terrible. Sure enough, I called Brian Riley, and he sent me the photo of Munson and and Chambliss standing side by side, and and Chambliss was ecstatic. So we did something right, Mike. There you go, man. I think I think this could go into the wee hours, but let me <laughs> yeah. let me do this. There may need to be a part two. Maybe maybe Mike can win again next year. I, th I think uh, there'd be support. Um, <laughs> So let me wrap it up with just a few things. Um, building on what Nick, uh, Nick said at the beginning in introducing the award, um, I, I think what we all just experienced for this last hour and 15 minutes is, is really the best of the baseball card hobby. Um, not only in the person of Mike Ehrenstein, but just in this group of people coming together, sharing stories. Uh, you know, I think, I think you, you collect the, the cards, but really you, the relationships end up being with the other collectors and, and the people. Uh, now, a lot, along those lines, some of you in the audience, let me, uh, let me see if, my, uh, if you can see what I'm holding up. Uh, I understand some of you do not yet have your Mike Ehrenstein commemorative card. You need to get in touch with me. I still have a limited supply. Uh, I need to get rid of these before Mike sues Saber uh, for stealing his design. Okay, I don't want any of these uh, in my house when the FBI comes. Uh, and then the final note I, I just wanted to share for all of you, and and I'm sorry, Keith, because I know you wanted something not to be recorded for posterity in this recent conversation. Uh, but this whole meeting has been recorded, and within a day or two, Saber will have it up on their YouTube channel. So uh, if you have friends or family who couldn't make it. Uh, mm -hmm. we will, we will have it, uh, forever on the internet with that, uh, Mike, anything you want to say to close the show? And, and I sure want to say thank you to everybody who was here. Oh, yeah. Totally. Thanks to everyone. And it's just a great honor uh, to do something. That, I said it before to do something that you love and then get an award for it is, is fabulous. <laughs> yes. A, a wonderful experience. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Well, one of these days, hopefully I'll meet you in person, but I, I, I can tell you, you're not hoping I visit soon. I keep getting your postcards that say visit Santa Fe. <laughs> Just not now. So, All, right. <laughs> All right. With that, this is, uh, well, Jason from Sabre Baseball Cards signing off. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you, Mike. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Here. Thanks, Mike. Great job. Bye. Love you, Mike. Congratulations. Thank you. Love man. you, Grandpa. <laughs> Congratulations. I'm glad you saw it. <laughs> I saw it all. Congratulations. I'm their granddaughter. <laughs> yeah, granddaughter won here. Love you. You deserve yes. everything. <laughs> yes. Yeah.
Hi, Tess. Hi. <laughs> Good luck. See you later. Stay safe. I hope to see you all soon. Yeah, we right. Never travel again. <laughs> hey, Mike, congratulations. Thank you. Thanks a million. Stay well, Michael. Stay well. Be Bye, good. all. Bye. <laughs> Oh, there's Sand and Joe oh, in the corner. Oh, Sand and Joe is there. <laughs> oh, and there's Joyce. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Joyce. <laughs> Hi. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Who else didn't we see on yeah. here? I just saw um, Abe, uh, I just saw Abe and Tamar. Yeah. Yeah. Mark and 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 Hi, there's Melina. Hi, Melina. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, very good. Take care. I've Maryland been here the there. whole time. <laughs> there you are. Yes, Melina. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. We didn't Thanks see you. Thanks a million, before, Jason. Though. All right. Everybody hang up. Goodbye. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs>